Hi, I'm Michael Palazzola with the LSU Ag Center, and we're going to take a look at the cauliflower that we started about three weeks ago and update you with some cultural practices that you want to have been doing a little bit earlier and keep going moving forward with. And the first thing we're going to look at is fertilizer. These have already been fertilized at planting and then once about a week and a half afterwards and we're going to go through and put some more fertilizer. Growing them in a container I like to fertilize more often in smaller doses. If you're growing it in the ground you may not need that because your dirt's going to be more effective and you can put a larger application and it will make use of it longer. But there's three main fertilizers I like to use in my vegetable garden and the one we're going to use for today is just a general triple 13, a well-balanced fertilizer. So so it's nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, the main nutrients your plant are going to need for that actively growing stage. But another one to consider is calcium nitrate. I like to put a few applications of this in my garden as well. Calcium is very important for the integrity of cells and it really helps their immune system because of that too a little bit. So I find you just get a healthier plant if you make certain you put something with calcium in it. It doesn't have to be calcium nitrate, it could be lime or gypsum depending on your soil type as well. And then occasionally, not as much for my vegetables, more for my ornamentals, Nursery Special is a good one to put as well because it has some micros in it. It's a 1266, so not as strong as your big three, but it has those little bit of micros in it. If you're using a liquid soluble fertilizer that has micros in it regularly in your garden, you may not want to consider Nursery Special, but it can be good if you want to phase that practice out in your garden. Now, as far as putting fertilizer out, I recommend don't do it with your bare hands. When you do, you discover all the little cuts that you have on your fingers because it will burn and it will aggravate, dry out your skin. Have a little scoop or something like this. This is a Scott scoop, very common in the industry to have little size scoops like this. This is on the very small spectrum. Again, I mentioned that I like to fertilize more often. So I would like to do just a little bit. This is almost like I would say almost two pinches. And we'll just walk through. I like to do it about level like that. And then I like to kind of do it around the edges like this. You almost can't see but through the perlite what I've put down there. But I like to go ahead and fertilize. Depending on what level and how fast my plants are going, for vegetables in containers about every week and a half to two weeks. When things slow down, we may slow down our fertilizer application every three weeks to a month when it gets much cooler. But that's a good general fertilization practices for growing in containers. And now we're going to move on to another aspect to look at. So now I want to visit with you a little bit about sunlight in your garden. Right now all of this is in shade, but you can look at the tiers of here and notice that there's a visible size difference with the bottom tier being significantly larger than the top tier. And that's because of the angle of sun I get towards the day. The top tier spends a little bit more time in the shade than the bottom tier. Ideally have your garden in full sun and you'll have nice uniform size, high quality growth and produce produced. But don't be intimidated to try it in a shady location if you need to, like I'm doing here. But you will notice that you'll have slower growth the more time that they spend in the shade. It may just take a longer window for you to get that cauliflower yield. I expect it to take just a tad bit longer for us to get that head formation and high quality uh, production of the cauliflower. But I'm not going to be discouraged. I think we still will have a nice crop even in this shady location. So experiment gardening in whatever location you have and don't let your lack of direct sunlight all day prevent you from trying growing vegetables. Okay, now I want to mention another important the prospect of growing vegetables, which is scouting. You want to catch any disease or insect issues real early to make the best use of whatever treatment plan you choose to do. So right here, we have a leaf-footed bug, which has decided he likes this cauliflower plant. So we're going to want to catch it early. Uh, right now, he's the only one I see, and we will go ahead and give him a new relocation spot. And go ahead and so now we have no leaf-footed bugs to worry about. Mechanical removal and 
Elimination is probably the most effective thing to use for leaf-footed bug, but it's going to depend on what insect pest or what pathogen you have. Make certain to check the LSU Ag Center's publications and see what treatment plan is recommended and act accordingly.